March 17th, 1995 held the event of a spring break house party in the small town of Pickering, Ontario. Located 30 miles east of Toronto, Pickering lies on the northern shore of Lake Ontario. Of the estimated 50 people attending the basement party, five teenage boys, Chad Smith, Jay Boyle, Jamie Lafave, Michael Cummins and Robbie Rumbolt had decided to leave the party at around 12.30am and head to Frenchman's Bay, a quiet harbour known to be a hangout spot for teens to gather and have a good time. En route, they picked up 16-year-old Danny Higgins to join in on the fun. This would be the last time anyone would see these six boys, and to this day, what happened is still unsolved. Witnesses at the party told investigators that the boys stated they'd be back before sunrise. When they didn't return, this triggered two of the girlfriends of the missing boys to contact the police, to which police authorities did not take this call with urgency, partly due to the lack of information of the whereabouts of the boys and a sense that the information they were being given by the girlfriends was not the full story. Nonetheless, Officer Gillum failed to write a report of the account that day and instead was ordered to a week later by his superior officer. By which point, this event's severity had escalated to a point that the interest of the public was so great that the local police department had no choice but to make a statement. And doing so, they made it seem like it was down to the information that they were given as to why a search for the boys was so delayed, rather than the lack of immediate action that they took to find the missing teens. By Saturday the 18th at 2pm, a search had begun producing very few leads across the weekend and the following Monday. Video surveillance footage at Frenchman's Bay Marina of the night of the boys went missing showed three teens allegedly to be that of Michael, Jamie and Robbie stealing alcohol from a boat docked at the harbour. Furthermore, a tricycle pedalo and a small boat that were reported anchored at the marina were now missing after the boys' disappearance. Despite video evidence of the boys removing beer from a boat, there was no evidence of the boys taking the boat or pedalo from the marina. However, local witnesses stated they heard the starting of a boat engine at 3am that morning. Along with the pedalo, the boat that was now missing was said to be that of a 14-foot Boston whaler imitation, a boat advertised as unsinkable. Even when damage is dealt to the external and internal walls of the boat, it will stay afloat. Even if the boat fills completely with water, the styrofoam insulated structure will keep the boat afloat. This information is vital when it comes to that of finding the missing teenagers, as it is many times easier to find a floating boat in a lake than that of one which has sunk. However, after weeks and months of searches, the boat and the pedalo still to this day have never been found. On the 29th of March, over a week after the six teenagers went missing, a fuel tank was found floating in Lake Ontario. The boat owners identified the tank as being theirs as they were able to identify it by the same dent they had on their fuel tank on the boat that was missing. Despite this being a possible new lead as to what happened to the boys, the situation in which the tank was found makes the theory that the boys did in fact take and use the boat slightly more unrealistic. On one hand, the tank was identified as being the one from the missing boat on the other hand, it was found nearly 60 kilometres away from Frenchman's Bay Harbour. In fact, 
It was found near the shore of Wilson, New York, which is located the other side of the lake. But for the tank to travel in this direction, there would have to be direct northerly winds across the lake in order for the tank to reach Wilson. This is simply not the case as there was westerly winds during this period which would mean the tank would end up further east along the coast. Furthermore, the tank supposedly only had enough fuel to take the boat 40 kilometers. This means that if the boys traveled west on the lake, they wouldn't reach far enough for the tank to then float far enough east to reach Wilson, where it was found. The Durham Police Department had initial plans to use ocean scan systems in Ontario to scan the bed of the lake for any foreign objects that could lead to any results in finding the boys. However, days before the scan was about to begin, the local police department cancelled the request. Furthermore, during the air search of the lake, a pilot flying a helicopter had reportedly seen a white boat just below the surface of the water. However, when private investigators requested this information years later, the police department had no paperwork or evidence of this happening. On top of this, a pair of red Levi denim jeans and human bones were found in the area of Niagara, situated on Lake Ontario, that matched the same pair of jeans that Jay Boyle wore on the night he and the others went missing. However, DNA testing was only conducted years later when the family and private investigators used a freedom of information request when the case went cold, but the police department stated the DNA test was a negative match to Jay and that the genes were not the same. In fact, the genes that were found in Niagara had changed description when the information was given to private investigators and the family of Jay. What was once a pair of red 32 waist Levi jeans had now changed to a pair of flame retardant orange lightweight trousers. The mix up of evidence led to an uproar of emotion from the family of Jay Boyle and Bruce Wicketts, the head private investigator of the case. All in all, there is a lot of evidence in this case that has been hidden from the public eye, including reports from those who dealt with the physical evidence in this case, to possible theories of a drug deal gone wrong, drowning, criminal acts or murder. An insight from Wayne Chalice, a local fisherman of Pickering, who was there the weekend they went missing, stated, quote, The night that they went missing wasn't a calm night. There were very strong offshore winds, and to a non-boater, the water would appear pretty flat and safe at the shore. But as soon as you get into the lake a short ways, the wind pushes the waves higher and higher, and of course, if your engine quits, or you run out of gas, and you get blown further out into the rougher and rougher water, the water temperatures on Lake Ontario in March are frigid, you wouldn't survive more than a very short time without proper survival gear. I never go out in the spring without a floater suit on. If they in fact did go out there in a small Boston whaler and ran out of gas, there's no mystery. They would have been blown further and further out until the seas were high enough to capsize them. It's inevitable. I've thought of them many times over the years as we've all done crazy stuff in our youths and gotten away with it, but they were unlucky enough to pay the ultimate price." End quote. To this day, none of the boys have been found and the families are still wishing for closure. It bears you to think, what happened to the six teenagers that night and why was it kept so tightly under lock and key by the local authorities? that the investigators had to pry their way through legal procedures to gain access to evidence of the case.